Hi everyone, I am Chirag Thakkar, Commissioning Editor at Roli Books and you're watching Roli Pulse, our new digital initiative. This is a specially curated series, Publishing Perspectives, where we bring together our peers from the publishing ecosystem to facilitate exchange and cross-pollination of ideas. Remember, you can check out all our previous sessions on our YouTube channel, Roli Books, our IGTV or Instagram, as well as Facebook and Twitter. And if you want us to put out more such content and show us your love, type in your comments in the comment section below and share this with your peers and colleagues and friends and anyone you wish to. This is the sixth episode of Publishing Perspectives, and today's conversation is on the business of selling books. And I'm very pleased to welcome our speakers for today, Tara Hai, Amrita Samaya, Rick Simonson, Nijay Shah, and Manjuri Sahai. Amrita is the director of Kitab Khana, a boutique bookshop in Bombay, India, really one of my favorite bookshops in the city, which endeavors to reintroduce people to the choice of reading. Rick Simonson is senior is a senior book buyer and co-director of the reading series at Seattle's international renowned Elliott Bay Book Company, where he has worked since 1976. Uh, we're joined by Nidesh Shah, who is group president at Sapna Book House Limited and Sapna Infoway. Uh, an Indian bookstore chain and publisher of books with over 18 stores across the country, and they're currently headquartered in Bangalore, India. Tara Hai is based in New York City and is partnerships manager at bookshop.org, which is an online bookstore with a dedicated mission to financially support local independent bookstores by giving them a significantly higher margin on book sales as opposed to the margin one makes when buying or ordering from Amazon. Amrita, Rick, Najesh, and Sarah are going to be in conversation with Manjuri Sahai. Manjuri is the book club and library associate at Belong. A scholar of gender study, she's previously worked as content trainer, teaching assistant, and editorial assistant. So welcome to Roli Pulse, all of you. Manjuri, why don't you get us started with the discussion? Thanks, Chirag. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Roli Pulse, a digital initiative of Roli Books. I thought I would begin today's discussion on the business of bookselling, uh, not just by asking how you're doing, but what you're reading, because I suspect uh, many of our listeners would be curious to know what kind of book helps a bookseller survive a global pandemic. So um, if you'd like to all have a go at that, uh, Amrita, maybe you'd like to go first. Sure. Thank you, Manjuri. And it's lovely to be here as part of this conversation. Um, it uh, has been a difficult uh, two months, I think uh, COVID-19 has hit us all. And um, it, uh, but I must say it has been a very positive uh, experience, uh, spending time with my family at home, uh, having my husband and my three kids here. My daughter actually just returned from New York in the beginning of March, where she's a sophomore at university and we're all grateful to have her home. Um, so it's been a very, uh, nice positive time for all of us to be together. Um, in terms of the books, uh, I've, I'm exploring uh, things that I've never read before, uh, especially things that are in my mother tongue, Gujarati, that I may have not picked up since I was a little kid. And uh, to give me some peace and solace, I'm uh, turning to spirituality more, uh, reading uh, scriptures uh, as uh, they've been written in their original text and trying to find time to understand them in a deeper way. So that's where I stand today. Yeah. Great. Well, it's good to hear that you're doing well and that this has given you an opportunity to turn towards some new things. Uh, Rick, I wonder if that speaks to your experience at all. My experience a little, I, I pr probably parallels a lot of booksellers where um, it felt like our readers were turning to books before we could, we were so kind of, our minds were so scrambled by the reality we were having to change and adjust to that at the end of a day, you just kind of, you're, you know, kind of all you do is sort of tip over uh, either deep sleep or sleepless, um, whichever way you went. Uh, but I have been reading and uh, especially in the mornings and one of the books that I've really been reading slow, actually the big thing is I've been reading slowly in several books, but one of them is a, is a book that came out about a year and a half ago, um, the title has a lot going on, How to Do Nothing, uh, the subtitle of which is Resisting the Attention Economy by a writer who's south of where I am named Jenny O'Dell. And she does a lot of things about what it is or isn't to be part of the, you know, the online world and where identity is. 
but she herself has a lot of uh, deep reading in the book. I mean, there's sources she turns to, um, and and it's about connections to the out the larger world, the natural world, and what's around us, seeing and hearing, paying attention to, and, and so that's that's been a very good book, uh, a no novel that's just come out during this time that I will be putting in people's hands when I can literally do that um, is done by a smaller publisher in the U.S. And it's a book called Above Us, the Milky Way by a young Afghan-American writer named Fauzia Karimi, uh, which Deep Vellum, the publisher, uh, did a beautiful edition. With, she has illustrations, she has, it's, but it's a moving, powerful book of, of a family that had to leave a country. And she never names the characters or the places, uh, but in almost a folk tale like way um tells us very incandescence does 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 it that way so those are a few of the things i'm happy to hear you mention how to do nothing because it was the first book i recommended to everyone as soon as the lockdown began um yeah. but excellent recommendations uh nijesh well uh i think i've been reading uh very different uh books altogether uh reading has been uh quite important uh in this entire lockdown because uh you know, though you're sitting at home, uh, because of uh, what you're reading, you're able to explore and imagine a lot of things outside of your home. And, uh, you know, uh, to start off with, uh, initially, I picked up uh, one of my uh, long time uh, uh, book that I had to complete, which was uh, Cain and Abel, Jeffrey Archer. It's been on the charts since forever and never got the chance to read it. So I finished that book and uh, it was an amazing read. Uh, very fast paced and uh, enjoyed every page as it turned. Apart from that, I, I got to a lot of comics. Uh, I had a small opening of uh, the store uh, at the time of, you know, sanitizing the entire store. And I went, uh, you know, got a lot of comics. I read Asterix. I read Margudi Days uh, as a children version of the comic. Uh, so these, uh, these, these, two, these two reads had kept me quite busy. And one thing in common with what uh, Amrita said was um, I too uh, picked up a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Gujarati uh, spiritual books that my Guruji had given me some time back, but never got a chance to really dwell into it. So I used to, you know, uh, read that early in the morning and then towards, uh, towards the noon or towards evening before I sleep, I used to get down to my uh, fiction or, you know, sometimes uh, the comics too. So it was a bit of uh, different uh, uh, different segments of uh, different genres of reading all throughout the day. But yes, it did help me a lot uh, in, uh, you know, going outside of uh, the room that I am in. That's really interesting. I wonder how reading different forms perhaps helps preserve one's state of mind during a time like this. Um, let's move on to Sarah. I love what you just said, Mandre, about reading different forms. Um, I have been trying to read across genres throughout this pandemic. So I, some of the favorite things I've read are um, Writers and Lovers, Lily King. It's a work of fiction about a young woman who's in the Boston area, who's kind of lost, is a writer and a waitress. And um, it's a very happy ending and something that was really positive and beautiful for me to read uh, during this pandemic. And I'm also reading Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert, uh, which is a kind of fun memoir to, to get me through this, you know, very strange time. But I, I also love what Nijesh just said about uh, graphic novels. Um, I have been loving this series in a French graphic novel uh, called Crapoul. It's about this little black cat, and I actually have a black cat at home, and Crapoul is really, really fun um, about a young woman with glasses, and she kind of looks similarly to me, which is why my friend gifted this to me, and she's just following around her mischievous little black cat. So I've been trying to vary my reading up with some some positive, you know, uplifting things, uh, even though I normally steer towards, you know, very in-depth, kind of darker nonfiction. So I've been, I've been varying it up a little bit. Nice. Yeah, I do wonder what role books of courage, in some sense, are going to play uh, moving forward, and whether we're going to see any change in the trends. Uh, but now moving swiftly along to our next question, um, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about what are some of the general trends that you noticed in book selling before the outbreak of COVID? So of course, COVID is going to be something that we discuss over the course of this conversation. Uh, but I wonder if we could speak a little bit about what those trends were before we are where we are now. Um, so maybe we can begin with you again, Amrita. So 
pre covid i think it was a time of uh, the holidays the christmas uh, the break you know december and january those were the months uh, that kitab khana normally sees a lot of visitors customers from around the world uh, looking for books on india uh, there were uh, actually one of the roli books uh, pakka indian uh, did a lot of good sales at, at kitab khana uh, you know i think the the genres that are usually picked up in uh, at kitab khana this that i can talk about are uh, children's books uh, a lot of uh, well illustrated and beautiful uh, new children's books from indian publishers are uh, some something that uh, was really you know do, doing a good business for us uh, i think um, non fiction always does very well at kitab khana and the classics uh, are books that have continuously uh, been on the forefront um, i can uh, point to maybe uh, also biographies in the last uh, you know 3 or 4 months uh, pre covid uh, have done very well so uh, that's and i think the lockdown came so suddenly that uh, we've not there's not been a post covid or uh, it's only been pre covid so that's uh, uh, that's been the scenario yeah. right rick what about you do you did you observe some of the similar trends uh somewhat similar we're a large independent single shop shop that has you know sells books you know kind of across the genres and different kinds of books um pre covid sounds like ancient history right now in a lot of ways um i think it's um and i agree with amrita we were coming out of the holidays but i mean it, it, Mumbai and I think I've been in India when people are coming back to January February is a good time of year to visit so it's January February is dark and wet and not that inviting in Seattle but um I think as much as you know the the book selling year has got cycles and seasons to it and what the pre covid time as I recall uh, was that you're in beginning to plan ahead and think in terms of a lot of the books that um we champion our books that also have authors that go out and travel and we you know we do a lot of bringing people together uh so in terms of how we even imagine books getting into people's hands that that was part of that time um which is changing we'll get to that i'm sure as we keep talking so um yeah and and i think in the us this still looms but uh knowing what was coming what the year holds um in terms of how books are being published and read uh we have a big election coming up this year and publishing does sort of generally alter uh with how and when they do books uh, especially la- later in the year uh so that that's still with us but it's been you know that conversation has been a little bit um changed with covid right nijesh what about you uh well yeah uh, the months before covid uh, were the christmas and the new years uh, you know season so apart from uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, travel reads and a lot of uh, uh, general books or trade books as we call it uh, we're moving off the shelf that sapna uh, another thing that always happens in the month of january is um, uh, the textbook selling because we are not only a trade book seller but we do a lot of textbook selling across different um, uh, you know syllabus of cbsc icsc and the cambridge so we normally have uh, january full of uh, you know librarians coming in to pick up uh, books to fill their library as well as teachers coming in to buy the uh, textbooks for uh, the upcoming classes we also see a lot of walk-ins with uh, parents uh, and their uh, children to uh, buy a lot of these um, uh, reference and guide books that would help them especially those who are studying the 9th grade or the 11th grade where they have the 10th and the 12th uh, you know uh, grades coming up so this is a time where we normally call it as you know moving to the back to school season uh, where we move uh, more towards the uh, academic selling and the textbook selling and uh, apart from uh, that uh, as a book store we also keep a lot of non book items so i think that also moves along with the entire back to school range so uh, january has been uh, uh, quite uh, uh, quite is always a busy month uh, for us and then it moves into feb uh, but of course we didn't really see uh, feb uh, completing uh, in, in a way that you know the covid came in and we had to uh, close things 
but uh, that's that's how that's how we've been uh, looking at uh, the pre covid season uh, we had a lot of uh, selling of academic and textbooks right okay uh, sarah i wonder if your uh, experience has been similar or different because certainly i think you might be able to comment from uh, a slightly macro perspective in the us given that bookshop.org seeks to bring different bookstores together uh, under a sort of umbrella organization and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the political sort of impulse uh, behind that but um, so if you could tell us a little bit about what you've observed absolutely so um, we actually just went live on January 28th very um, you know kind of close to COVID so we only had about a month and some change before COVID really hit the US um, so before COVID we were seeing you know the classic bestsellers were the, were the Kravad Singh, the, the kind of more commercial big five, um, exciting propulsive novels. Um, and after and during, I guess we're still during COVID, unfortunately, we've seen a lot more, um, you know, how to kind of get yourself through a pandemic. So there are a lot of book lists, both that, both that uh, our staff has created and a lot of bookstores have created on how to get yourself through a pandemic. So, you know, we have the Plague, Albert Camus, we have, um, we've seen Severance, Ling Ma, How to Do Nothing, Jenny O'Dell, some very, you know, kind of how do I get myself through this unprecedented time? Um, and we're still watching those trends, but as a book, I also am a former bookseller, so I'm, I'm noticing that it's interesting how the book trends change with history and this very, very, uh, incredible time that we're going through. So I'm, I'm continuing to watch, but we have definitely noticed some COVID reads trending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find it so interesting that none of us know how to speak about the time we live in. Is it pre-COVID? Is it post-COVID? Are we during? There's no way to sort of wrap our heads around this. And, and of course, the difficulty of wrapping our heads around this also has to do with how book selling as a business has been affected. Uh, by COVID. And this next question um, is about, you know, since the outbreak of COVID, um, what has been your experience as a bookseller? And what is your sense of the experience of booksellers around you in some sense? Because um, in India, during the initial stages of the lockdown, for example, um, and I'm sure Amrita and uh, Nijesh will say a bit more about this, um, deliveries were not permitted. Bookstores could not operate the way they usually have. So during the initial stages of the lockdown uh, in India, and I'm sure Amrita and Nijesh will say a little bit more about this, uh, bookstores were not allowed to function as they usually do. Um, only bookstores in Kerala and bookstores that sell textbooks uh, were allowed to be open. Uh, but now, of course, in these later stages that we're seeing now, uh, bookstores have resumed delivery in whatever small degree, but naturally that also poses a challenge. Um, so I'd be interested in knowing what you guys have observed. Uh, maybe we can begin with you this time, uh, Sarah, just to get a broad overview of what it's looking like in the U.S. Sure. So um, on Bookshop, again, we we just launched end of January, and uh, we had a fair amount of bookstores on the site. But as COVID began to take over the US, we've um, just had an unprecedented amount of growth and books bookstores on our site. So at the beginning of COVID, I would say we had maybe two or 300 bookstores on the on the site as affiliates. And now we have close to 700. We have 800 in the pool, which is the 10% distribution pool generated from 10% of all non ABA bookstore sales. Um, so we have definitely noticed a an ex financial amount of growth with bookstores who have joined our platform, which we of course were not anticipating, especially because we're still in beta technically. So our site is very new. We have, you know, things we're still working on improving and we will always be improving, but uh, we did not anticipate this sort of level of, of need that a lot of bookstores have relied on us to sell books through bookshop, which has been, you know, really exciting and, and um, I guess exciting all things considered, but uh, I, I'm very happy that we were able, we've been able to help so many bookstores during this just really, really strange time because so many of the bookstores in the U.S. have been forced to close. So this is their only way to sell books. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nijesh, uh, would you like to go next and maybe say a little bit about what it's been like for you in uh, India? Because I know you mentioned that uh, you also sell textbooks. So I wonder uh, if your experience was a bit different. Let's see. Um, the exact uh, date of lockdown, if I can start from there, was after the 22nd of March. And until that time, uh, we were operating as normal stores would operate. And thereafter, uh, the general uh, information given out by the center was to close everything down irrespective of whether you're a retailer or a manufacturer or whatever the case was and uh, further to it uh, so we had to follow the norm we closed everything we had to keep shutters closed and then following about uh, uh, a couple of weeks from then uh, somewhere around uh, april first week uh, is when we got uh, information that uh, books uh, bookstores that sell textbooks will come under essential goods and thereby we are allowed to open uh, but frankly speaking, it was tough uh, because uh, uh, the the information that was given from the center did not really pass down the right funnel to the state governments. And when we went uh, to the local authorities to uh, try and open our stores because we have textbooks and we fall under this category, we were denied uh, initially because they didn't have any information of that sort. But then uh, a few weeks uh, down the lane, again in the last week of April, uh, somewhere about 22nd or 24th of April, we were uh, we started to open uh, open open stores, and uh, that's that's how we uh, began. And uh, today, most of our stores, except for the stores in the malls, are now open. But there's one interesting observation that we made in this entire uh, scenario was that we never never really took our e-commerce store very seriously because um, uh, we had that as a platform, and we were getting orders uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, the brick and mortar store was actually our uh, bread and butter, to say so. Uh, but in this period, all of a sudden, we saw a huge rise of orders coming into sapnaonline.com, which is our e-commerce store. And uh, we didn't expect that. And uh, uh, trying to fulfill those orders, again, become a challenge because the courier partners who we, ha we had a tie-up with did not really uh, work or operate in this period. And then we had to pile up the orders and then increase our customer support, have people working from home to speak to the customers and tell them that, you know, we'll be having a delay in shipment. But interestingly, most of the customers really did not uh, fight back or, you know, ask about why the delay or why can't I get my book? Because most of them were aware of the situation and uh, the kind of books that uh, were ordered uh, were children books, which was an, again, an interesting observation that we made in the e-commerce store because many parents uh, wanted to uh, get a lot of children books uh, because they had kids and their children at home not going to the school and not having other extra curricular activities. And they didn't want their child to really look at the, at the screen, the YouTube or the other digital interface for a long period of time. So books became uh, a need uh, uh, in this period. And uh, we found that uh, that, is, uh, that was quite encouraging for us to see that a lot of children books when moving off um, the e-commerce platform. Uh, having said all of that, uh, when we opened in the last week of April, um, we had uh, we started with the home deliveries, and you know we started to reach out to uh, our set of customers. Uh, we tied up with hyper local players, and I think the response that the customers gave us was also positive, and uh, they started to come by, and that's that also made us realize that books as an industry. Uh, even though, um, you know, if you look at a textile industry or if you look at an electronic store industry, uh, these industries can still wait in the times of COVID. But books become an essential part of, of your life, uh, especially when you have kids and children at home. So, you know, having seen and observing all of it, it was uh, really nice to see that, you know, uh, throughout the entire COVID, books uh, became more important than before, is what I would, uh, I would say. And the point you made about e-commerce stores is particularly important. It clearly speaks to what Sarah just said. Uh, and Rick, I wonder if uh, your experience speaks to the experience of both Sarah and Nijesh in some ways. Yes. Um, let's see. Well, it, first of all, from what I understand, India has, um, I mean, for COVID, there's both a health science aspect and there's a political aspect or where your leadership or, or you know, policies come from. And I believe India's had a little more national direction that way. I mean, however that's taken. In the U.S., it's been a lot more muddled, to put it away. 
uh, in that we can't really look to our, certainly our national political leadership for, you know, clear clarity and, and coherence. And in the U.S., it's really turned to the states and the regions of the country to, to sort of take this on. The part of the U.S. I'm in was actually the first part to be visited by COVID, um, the very first kind of cases. So we were in that strange period of a day or two ahead of everyone else. Like we, you know, the and, and it, some of it was coming from government, uh, our, our government, which has been very good on the science side. Uh, so we were sort of, but things we had never imagined we might have to do us and we're aware of others, restaurants, everything was having to having to totally alter what they were doing. And so, you know, there was that kind of staggering um, period of this, this and this of change. Uh, so what, what, but, but there's been variations. Our store uh, was certainly closed, but we've been able to bring in a small crew of five, five or six of us who all ironically had not really done much uh, internet work uh, you know, f filling orders, uh, which we, you know, the the American booksellers has a good platform for uh, if you if your if your own data system uh, integrates well with it to sell books online. Uh, furthered by, you can actually direct sales to a wholesaler too that that can fulfill and ship. Um, which which uh, so anyway, I my role in the last two months has actually been uh, a very non. The only way I've dealt with books is holding them to wrap them and pack them. I've been the warehouse person uh, on my feet all day, um, which I've never done this kind of work before in, in terms of a you know, eight hour day. Uh, so, so there's that, um, the, the store, and the store actually has done well with this. I mean, um, we've had Mother's Day in the US uh, uh, and that's always been a nice, you know, certain bustle around it, but nothing major. I mean, people get some things wrapped and all, but it became a, a major thing this year because so many people couldn't directly see uh, or relate to their mothers or you know, mothers in their lives. And so, uh, and we did some, uh, uh, I'm not definitely not the social media person, but we did some promotions. We put together a little gift boxes that people responded to in, you know, book and uh, chocolate and um, puzzle uh, puzzles were huge too uh, <laughs> uh, are I guess still so um, yeah so it's 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 not actually a very sustainable way to continue uh, but it's been able to uh, keep income coming in uh, certainly to pay the basic bills um, one of the things that's helped in the US and certainly an ongoing concern is that um, and this again our state has been good we had to lay off most of furlough most of the staff uh, you know, we we do we provided health insurance through all this, uh, but the state's unemployment policy and if augmented by federal support, most of the booksellers got laid off. Actually, get paid better uh, in than they do. It. I mean, bookselling is not a you know high paying uh, calling, and uh, but the way that's worked out here, that uh, most of the so the staff is actually though we miss you know they've not been able to be here, and there's going to be this whole part of uh, as they're beginning to come back. Um, uh, but we're able to do it in sort of a mod modulated way based on how the business will be is changed and will be changing. Yeah. Just to speak to what you said about the difficulty of looking um, towards your political leadership during this time, uh, mm -hmm. I think the sentiment that I've observed in Delhi anyway, because that's uh, the set of booksellers that I've been interacting with, um, is just a sense that, you know, the government doesn't care about small businesses. Um, and I wonder, Amrita, if uh, that speaks to what has been your experience uh, so far and how, what are some of the struggles that you faced? So for Kitab Khana, uh, the lockdown impacted us with just a complete closure. Uh, trains are closed. And there's no way that even if I would like to, uh, you know, start delivering, uh, there's no way that my staff can be there. Uh, we work with a very skeletal staff anyways. We have about seven uh, people working for us and um, uh, we do everything ourselves, you know, packing, uh, shipping, data entries and all of that. It, it works in a very, um, you know, small, uh, typical manner. Uh, so it has been a struggle. We've reached out to the BMC uh, local government uh, many times to try and uh, persuade them to let us open with just maybe a couple of people, do curbside 
deliveries, uh, maybe try tie up with people like WeFast, which is a new app courier service, which can get uh, books from one place to the other quickly. And we've had so many customers calling up uh, and saying, just please, can you get these books out of the store and get them to us? Uh, again, uh, what Nijesh said is children, parents are looking for another alternative for their children, you know, for their kids to be able to uh, read and be away from their online uh, online time. Most of our kids are having online classes. They're, you know, in uh, in Zoom and other uh, apps all day long. So they need an outlet to be able to read. But uh, it's been it's been a struggle. As of now, Kitab Khana is completely shut, and we look forward to new guidelines from the government uh, in the lockdown four as it begins in a couple of days to see if we can uh, start something. Um, and as uh, Kitab Khana, we encourage our customers to come into the store, feel the books, smell the books, experience our store. Uh, we've never had a digital uh, or an online platform to sell. Uh, but what excites me is what bookshop.com does in the US. And uh, I hope to be able to do something uh, similar here in India, maybe sometime. <laughs> and so, yeah, so that's, it's been a, it's been a long uh, battle and I think it's going to continue for another few months. Uh, this is not ending too soon. Yeah. Uh, and just to speak to what you said about, um, you know, the importance of obviously being able to touch books and smell books and really engage with them um, viscerally, that has sort of, um, disappeared during this lockdown and that has been incredibly difficult for bookstores everywhere uh, but what has emerged instead and you know several of you alluded to that in your answers is uh, an increasing number of social media strategies that are being deployed to stay connected to your community of readers right even if you can't uh, supply the books necessarily um, so I was wondering uh, and I know you guys have already said a little bit about this but if you could say some more about uh, how your businesses have employed these social media strategies and um, whether you think this increasing digital reliance so to speak uh, of booksellers and readers might shift traditional ideas of book selling what could it mean for brick and mortar stores what could it mean for physical books versus ebooks so I think those are all interesting questions to consider. And maybe we could begin with you, Nijesh, this time. Sure. Um, so I think there are two questions. Uh, the first question uh, to what I understand was how uh, we as, uh, as a company, as a bookstore, uh, use social media to be in touch with our customers. So to answer to that, uh, uh, honestly speaking, we didn't do uh, anything extraordinary. Uh, because at the time of uh, the lockdown, uh, we ourselves were very confused as to what we have to do and uh, how to move ahead. Because uh, the initial first uh, set of weeks uh, were all about uh, our employees for calling us and you know trying to secure their job and you know asking us things like, "Would we get our salaries?" And uh, you know, how do we come from our hometowns now? And those who are stuck in Bangalore, you know, asking help from us as to whether we could help them to move to their hometown and stuff like that. Uh, parallelly, we had, uh, you know, we were in discussion with uh, mall owners and landlords in terms of how the rentals would move, how we are, uh, how we would look at the entire scenario post lockdown. So, initial couple of weeks, uh, we spent a lot of time in understanding the situation. Uh, social media, as such, uh, we have uh, we have been interacting with our customers, uh, you know, throughout uh, the year uh, across platforms of Instagram, Facebook these are the two most uh, used platforms that we have been operating on so uh, the general post of you know uh, of what we are doing was first uh, announced there and uh, certain information like you know now we are closed and we'll be back soon and stuff like that so general communication of what uh, what was going around from from uh, from a bookstore point of view uh, was given out and uh, thereafter, uh, we started to engage with them um, in not in a different way, but uh, just keeping the communication going on, you know, posting something or the other on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, keeping them uh, very close knit to books and reading. So that was more, 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 more about it. 
but uh, towards the uh, beginning of the reopening uh, which happened with us uh, in the month of uh, april uh, second or uh, maybe third week uh, we started to inform the customers again in terms of that we are open and we are following basic you know hygiene standards and uh, these are the uh, precautions we have been taking in our store so now you can come in and uh, we also uh, tied up with hyper local uh, partners for home delivery so you know customers would call us place their uh, orders and we would ship them to their home so this became uh, the new normal for us and in fact even till today uh, we are seeing a lot of calls and uh, it's more or less uh, reaching out to the customers where they are then asking them to come to the store um so this is uh, uh, this is pretty much it in terms of uh, social media the main objective was to communicate to our customers uh, what was happening uh, and many customers like amrita also mentioned that uh, in a bookstore uh, there are customers who are loyal to you and they want to come back to that kind of a community environment because they've been you know there they've been reading and they've been seeing the new books and you know taking them with them so you know the loyal and the regular customers uh, some of them we were in touch with them directly and trying to keep the communication going on uh, even though the shutters were closed so this is pretty much what uh, we did and how we use social media uh, by just communicating to our customers what the current situation is and what we are doing and what we intend to do uh, that is how we use social media and uh, the second question um, could you repeat the second question for me please sure the second question was um and do you think the increasing digital reliance of both booksellers and readers will change the role of the brick and mortar bookstore uh so uh, in terms of how this entire uh, pandemic will play when it comes to book reading uh, i don't think uh, i strongly believe in fact that uh, book selling will not uh, change uh, drastically because if it has to change it has to change at the grassroots level when we speak about ebooks when we speak about digitalization of books unless and until it happens at the grassroots level of schools where private schools and government you know uses digital mediums to teach uh, i don't think the entire habit of a physical book uh, uh, will really be an issue because um, people are still very much happy uh, to be taking and buying physical books keeping them with themselves as if it's their own possession like how you would keep a uh, you know if you have a, your favorite pillow or if you have a favorite teddy you know they have their favorite books even if they have read it uh, earlier so i think the physical book concept is something which drives a lot of emotions which you may not find in an ebook uh, uh, scenario but having said that uh, both both of this the physical and the ebook will move like like a railway track where you have both the tracks uh, moving forward but i just feel that uh, the the number of readership that is growing uh, across the globe in india especially uh, the first uh, aspect of the readership will move to physical and then you know they will try out new things like audio books and ebooks but still keep that base in buying physical books and reading them and keeping them with themselves um, uh, as part of their possession so i don't think uh, it's it's really going to change uh, in a way that we will see something drastic post the pandemic things definitely will get back to normal and in fact readership will increase uh, because uh, you know they want to uh, engage their children especially the parents with more and more books because they've seen the entire lockdown uh, going online and going digital so there will be means by which things will get traditional and tradition is here to stay for a long time especially in india Mm-hmm. Sarah I'd like to bring you in here so I know that bookshop.org is a, a digital platform right and I wonder uh, you said earlier that there's been a real rise in the number of bookstores who have signed up with you uh, but I wonder if uh, you feel that there could be a fallout from this experience uh, in terms of physical bookstores uh, falling into redundancy um, or you know just it changing how people read and um what they think about bookstores more generally that's a great question so um bookshop by design is we give away 70 to 75% of our profits we only take a very small amount to um you know pay our staff and pay the web platform but by design and our mission is to support independent bookstores and keep the physical location bookstores alive and healthy and thriving 
Um, I never, you know, I never would have wanted to do this project if it was otherwise, because I do come from a bookselling background and I believe firmly in the future of bookstores. And, you know, buying a book online is not the same as going into a bookstore and smelling the book and talking to the bookseller and, you know, having that experience. Um, I don't think there will ever be a replacement for going into a bookstore and neither does anyone at bookshop.org. So, um, we need to watch how, you know, the transition from, from during COVID to post COVID happens, but Bookshop is committed to kind of, you know, alerting the customers that they need to go back into the bookstores when it's safe and healthy, because that is, that is what our future needs is thriving bookstores across the U S across the world. Um, so we're firmly dedicated to making sure that customers go back into their, their indie bookstores. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think we'll have to just watch and see to make sure that that uh, the platform is supporting into books, independent bookstores as, as best as we can. But we're always changing and we're, again, our explicit mission is to support the future of indie bookstores in their physical location form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Rick, if I could bring you in here and just ask you, um, you know, of course, bookshop.org is committed to organizing bookstores in some sense uh, in the U.S. against uh, giants like Amazon who can offer their books at heavily discounted prices. Uh, but I was wondering, you know, how you perceive the, not just the need uh, for something like this, but also the present threat and how that may have amplified this need. Well, something neither Sarah nor has said in, in talking about things that, and since you mentioned Amazon is that in the current state we're in, Amazon's actually backed away from books. So it's a created, there has been an opportunity here. There is opportunity here. And I think uh, booksellers, both with Bookshop and, uh, and, and then other stores have been trying to seize that. I mean, we didn't know we would be seizing it, but we are and we realize uh, because people, and so we're getting a chance to show what our online service when, when people are, are using it is. Um, I think, of course, we don't know when this will be over because of the until until vaccines and things like that really are developed and and can be applied. Um, we it could be you know it could go up and down. Or there's a lot of again political pressures are being exerted to do certain things and and, and economic ones too. But um, we'll see where it goes. Uh, for us, also we've been we've always done some social media, but I think we've been trying to sort of. Um, distinguish uh, there's social media which helps sort of makes um, information about books generally out there but we also what we found we at this period we really have to do things that drive sales so um, for example um, for looking the foreseeable future there's not gonna be author tours where authors go out and sometimes that's you know a, a debut where you're just hoping people show up and find out about the book sometimes it's a well-known author where you can sell Admission for 2,000 people is each one has to buy a book. So you've sold 2,000 copies of a book like that. Uh, how do you, and publishers have gotten dependent on that, or at least that's become part of their basic, and, and authors, uh, and the bookstore is involved. I mean, we're, we've been fortunate to be part of that ecosystem. But um, how is that going to work um, in the online world and all that, you know, going forward? And also, I think, um, to sort of things other people uh, just said, I think, um, uh, I think there's, you know, there are people, there's all sort of digital overload. I mean, pe people's children are online doing classes. People are doing their jobs from home that, that can on online. Uh, we're doing, you know, everyone's having their coffee clatches or their cocktail hours or whatever they are uh, online. And so to step away from that and whether it's a book or stepping outside of you or in a place you can do that, those are big pulls on people's, uh, and so that will also, I think, in the part where people come back into stores, there'll be some of that. I mean, it's, it's going to be some back and forth, I think, for, over time. Amrita, uh, just to bring you in here, um, you had said something a little bit earlier about, um, you know, wanting to be involved in something like a bookshop.org that brings bookstores together. So maybe if you could say a little bit more about the need for that in what is such a heavily digitalized landscape now. Uh, so what I've seen over the last couple of months, uh, which is unique uh, to the booksellers world in India, is that people are actually conversing. They're talking, they're collaborating. Uh, there is an email thread that's been started by a publisher in Goa, and uh, it's connected with many different publishers around India and booksellers. 
independent booksellers and larger booksellers. And I think that's the beginning. And I think we need to bring people together and this pandemic is helping us do that. And I think that maybe uh, some, you know, people coming together to start an indie booksellers organization uh, in India will uh, help uh, do something like bookshop.org in India in the future. And I think uh, for booksellers like us, that would be a, a very, very welcome uh, platform. Uh, since not all of us small booksellers have the resources to put together to bring it onto a digital platform. And um, I don't have the manpower, you know, lots of different uh, uh, resources that we require to be on the digital scale. So I think, and also I think uh, what we do best is curate our books and to be able to bring those curated books onto the national platform. And for the, you know, the country and the book lovers across India to actually buy a Kitab Khana book from Gangtok or from Bangalore uh, would just be tremendous. I think that's, uh, that's where we would like this pandemic to end and bring us to uh, some kind of a positive result. And uh, I think Kitab Khana is doing a lot of stuff on their social, our social media platform where we're trying to connect with our uh, customers like we do on a normal basis. Uh, give them comfort, uh, give them the joy of just uh, being in the midst of books and, uh, you know, talking about books, storytelling, book launches, etc. So we're trying to do that digitally. And I, I hope that, uh, uh, you know, maybe we can reach out to Sarah to help us uh, in the future and to bring this together. But it, it would be a wonderful, uh, you know, story at the end of this. Great. So I think that's all we have time for today. Uh, but thank you all so much for joining us for this insightful discussion. Um, follow Roly Books on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates on more exciting activities from Roly Pulse. Stay well and hashtag believe in books. Thank you all. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.